Hey guys, my name is Inner Dark from Stubborn Panda Productions, and this is a beginner's guide to creating legendary weapons in Guild Wars 2. And today we will be looking at the Howler. The Howler is a really nice looking warhorn that surrounds the user's body in fog. It also leaves behind watery footprints that quickly evaporates into fog. To craft the Howler, you will need the following four components. The Howl, which is the precursor, the Gift of Howler, the Gift of Fortune, and the Gift of Mastery. Each of these components, except for the precursor, are made up of components of their own, and the order in which you collect them is up to you. However, I do have a recommended order of doing things, which I will share later on in this video. So let's take a look at how you can collect all of the items required to create the four main parts of this legendary. The Howl. The Howl can be bought on the trading post, which at the time of this video is going for roughly 100 gold. It can also be earned through a series of collections that you can access via the achievements panel if you are interested in doing it that way. Lastly, just like any of the first generation precursors in Guild Wars 2, the Howl can actually be dropped from enemies in the game. So make sure that you have completed the Advanced Logistics Mastery and that you tick all of the auto loot functions in the Options menu. If you do decide to buy it on the trading post and you have the patience to wait, then I recommend putting in a buy order to save some gold for the rest of the Legendary. Doing this can sometimes take a couple of days. So if you don't have the patience to wait or you urgently want your Legendary and you have the gold to spend, then you can go ahead and buy it at the selling price. The Gift of Howler The Gift of Howler is one of the more expensive parts of this legendary. It consists of the Gift of Wood, a Wolf Statue, a hundred icy runestones and a superior sigil of accuracy. To craft the Gift of Wood, you will need a Huntsman at level 400. You will also have to buy the recipe for the Gift of Wood for 10 gold from Iani who is next to the Mystic Forge in Lion's Arch. Once you have done this, you will have to combine 250 seasoned wood planks, 250 hard wood planks, 250 ancient wood planks and 250 elder wood planks at the Huntsman Station. To craft the Wolf Statue, you will need a leather worker at level 400. You will also have to buy the recipe from Iani for another 10 gold. Once this is done, you will have to buy the Gift of Thorns from the Dungeons Weapon and Armor Vendor for 500 Deadly Blossoms. The Dungeons Weapon and Armor Vendor is just south of the Ford Mariner Waypoint in Lion's Arch. To obtain the Deadly Blossoms, you will have to do the Twilight Arbor Dungeon multiple times, or you can do the Twilight Arbor Dungeon Reward Track in either World vs. World or PvP a few times. All of these options are good, as they will reward you with additional gold and materials that you can use later on in the Legendary. So it is up to you to decide which of them you want to do. Combine the Gift of Thorns with 250 Orichalcum ingots, 250 Cured Hardened Leather Squares and 250 Vicious Fangs at the Leatherworking Station to create the Wolf Statue. The Icy Runestones are a part of the Legendary that you unfortunately have to spend gold on. They cost 1 gold each and you need 100 of them so it adds up to a total of 100 gold that you will have to spend. You buy them from Rojan the Penitent who is northwest of the Earthshake Waypoint in Frost Gorge Sound, as you can see in this picture. If the Jaw Mag event is running, then Rojan may not be there and you will have to wait for the event to end before he returns. The superior sigil of accuracy can be obtained in many ways, such as being crafted at the artificing station, but the quickest and easiest way would be to simply just buy it on the trading post. Once you have obtained the gift of wood, the wolf statue, the hundred icy runestones and the superior sigil of accuracy, you can combine them in the mystic forge to create the Gift of Howler. 
The gift of fortune goes into all of the first generation legendary weapons in Guild Wars 2, and it is a very painful part of the process. It consists of 77 Mystic Clovers, 250 Globs of Ectoplasm, a gift of might, and a gift of magic. To obtain the 77 Mystic Clovers, you will need 10 Obsidian Shards, 10 Mystic Coins, 10 Globs of Ectoplasm, and 10 Mystic Crystals. Combine these in the Mystic Forge. This recipe will return an output of 10 Mystic Clovers. So when you get to 70 Mystic Clovers and you only need 7 more, swap out the Mystic Crystals for Philosopher's Stones. Please note that this recipe only has an approximate 32% chance to return Mystic Clovers and can instead return a number of other materials, including Tier 6 materials which is needed for creating both the Gift of Might and the Gift of Magic, so it is important to do the Mystic Clovers before doing those. Mystic Clovers can also be obtained in various other ways, such as PvP and World vs World Reward Tracks. So if you do not want to create them in the Mystic Forge with this recipe, then check the wiki for the other methods of obtaining them. The Gift of Might and the Gift of Magic are both made up of different tier 6 materials that will have to be combined in the Mystic Forge to create the respective gift. The Gift of Might consists of 250 Vicious Fangs, 250 Armored Scales, 250 Vicious Claws, and 250 Ancient Bones. The Gift of Magic consists of 250 Vials of Powerful Blood, 250 Powerful Venom Sacks, 250 Elaborate Totems, and 250 Piles of Crystalline Dust. Once you have obtained the 77 Mystic Clovers, the 250 Globs of Ectoplasm, the Gift of Might and the Gift of Magic, you can combine them in the Mystic Forge to create the Gift of Fortune. The Gift of Mastery also goes into all of the first generation legendary weapons in Guild Wars 2, and it is a rather cheap part of the process. However, it can be extremely time consuming, as you will have to finish the world exploration to get the Gift of Exploration. This does not include the Maguma Jungle from the Heart of Thorns expansion or the Crystal Desert from the Path of Fire expansion. Combine your Gift of Exploration with a Bloodstone Shard, a Gift of Battle and 250 Obsidian Shards in the Mystic Forge to create the Gift of Mastery. Once you have obtained the Howl, the Gift of Howler, the Gift of Fortune and the Gift of Mastery, you can combine them in the Mystic Forge to create the Howler. Creating legendary weapons can seem like a daunting task, and like no matter how much you play, you will never be able to make them. But, here is a list of my favorite farming locations to speed up the process. The Silver Wastes. The Silver Wastes is still a great place to farm for materials and gold, as there are always commanders on this map, and you can run it multiple times a day without worrying about event timers. When you do the Silver Wastes, you will also receive a lot of Obsidian Shards from opening the Lost Bandit Chests during the chest farm after killing the Vine Wrath. Tangled Depths and Auric Basin The Tangled Depths and Auric Basin map meta events are a great place to farm for resources, and they always happen directly after one another. Each of these will also reward you with the option to choose an amalgamated gemstone as your reward once per day that you can sell on the trading post for a bit of extra gold. World Bosses Doing World Bosses is still a great way of farming for materials. You can do each boss once per day per account and they will always drop a bonus chest that contains a rare or exotic piece of equipment that can be salvaged for extra globs of ectoplasm. This bonus chest, according to the wiki, also has the highest chance of containing a precursor weapon than any other chest in the game. So if you are thinking of trying to farm for precursor weapons instead of buying or crafting them, then this is the way to go. There will always be a lot of players fighting the world bosses, meaning that the events will be quick and relatively easy. Please note, your character has to be above level 40 to have a chance of receiving any rare gear from the event. 
fractals. The fractals of the mists is probably the most rewarding thing to do in Guild Wars 2. The issue here is that you need at least one character that is fully geared in ascended gear and that has around 150 agony resistance and getting a character to this stage of being ready for fractals is really difficult and can be very expensive. You should try to do the daily tier 4 fractals every day. Dungeons Dungeons are not nearly as rewarding as they used to be, but some of them are really easy and quick to do and the amount of gold that you gain for the amount of time that you spent in them is totally worth it. Lastly, remember to always do your dailies as this will reward you with an extra 2 gold per day. To make the process of crafting this legendary as fun as possible while still saving some gold, I recommend that you do things in this order. The first three things that you should focus your attention on is the gift of exploration, gift of battle and gift of thorns. You can do them in any order you like, but I recommend first doing the map exploration while doing the daily PvP and World vs World achievements. This will reward you with potions that further the progress of your reward track in both PvP and World vs World. So make sure that you have the Gift of Battle reward track selected in World vs World and the Twilight Arbor Dungeon reward track selected in PvP. If you do things in this way, then you should finish the Gift of Battle and the Gift of Thorns before finishing the Gift of Exploration. The reason I like to focus on these three things first is because you will end up receiving a lot of materials that you will use later on in the Legendary such as Misty Clovers, Obsidian Shards, Tier 6 Materials and Globs of Ectoplasm from Salvaging Rare and Exotic Gear. When you are doing the Gift of Exploration, you should make sure that you have Gathering Tools equipped and that you gather every single resource node that you run past. The next thing that you should focus on is the Gift of Fortune, starting with the Misty Clovers, as the recipe may also return some of the other Tier 6 Materials that you need for the rest of the Legendary. After doing the Gift of Fortune, you should focus on the Gift of Mastery. Next, do the Gift of Howler. Lastly, we have the Precursor. I generally like to put in a buy order for a Precursor when I start the process of creating a new Legendary weapon, but I know that a lot of other players like to do it at the end, so it is up to you to decide when you want to get the precursor. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, then please give it a like and share it with your friends who may want to create this legendary weapon in the future. If you have any questions, then please feel free to ask them in the comment section of this video. And if you are interested in creating other legendary weapons but you don't know how or where to get started, then consider subscribing to my channel as I will be bringing out more guides like this one in the near future.